Hi everybody, welcome to an evening uh, sort of additional episode of IndyCar. It's not often I decide to sort of add on a little bit of programming to the end of the day, but you know how occasionally you get one of those light bulb moments where you have an idea and you think, I really should do something about this before I forget about it. Well, I had a moment like that this afternoon. I was thinking about what was going to happen uh, if we voted yes in an independence referendum before Brexit happened. What would actually happen? Now, normally I steer clear of mentioning hypothetical situations um, when I'm discussing politics because sometimes it raises false hope. But here's a thought, okay, and it's just a thought I wanted to share with you, but at the end of the day. Imagine that we have our independence referendum without the Section 30 order. The UK government doesn't recognise the result, okay? But we have our independence referendum. It is fully and transparently run. It's fairly run. There's no vote tampering, no postal votes. Everything is done clearly and in public view. Nobody can gain see the result. Maybe we use the blockchain voting system, but whatever we do, it's done legally and it's done with international observers from all over the world to ensure it's scrupulously fair. And assuming that we win this, let's say we won it with a reasonable majority, say something like 60, 65% of Scots voted uh, to end the union with England, then what should happen next? Now, it was at that point I thought, well, what would happen if we voted yes just before Brexit? Now, imagine we voted yes, England doesn't rec represent, doesn't recognise the result, and at the same time, they uh, start the Brexit process, either that or we crash out of Europe accidentally, but we are Brexiting, okay? Now at that very moment, Scotland is in a kind of limbo. It's between being in the UK and being in the EU, uh, and being an independent country and being still part of Union. It's in the middle of all of this. What could we do with that moment? And the thing that struck me that we could do with that moment is to go to our friends in the European Union and say, listen, we warned you that we were going to vote for independence and it's happened now. We have the mandate from our people to end the union with England, but they won't accept it. So we get our friends in the European Union, the negotiators who are dealing with Brexit, to put it to the English government, because that's who they'd be dealing with, that if they recognised Scotland's vote as legal and legitimate, and the fact that the Scottish state wishes to withdraw <coughs> from the Act of Union with England, then they will do a better deal with England as a result. And they could do this. The other thing that occurred to me at that moment is they could also make a precondition of a really good deal for England uh, for there to be a, a border pole in Northern Ireland along the border with the Republic. And if that result was positive and the people of Northern Ireland wanted to reunify with the South, then that also would become part of the bargain with Europe because the European Union would then be representing all of Ireland and all of Scotland. And we would be also Europeans. We would be representing Europe. So that would put England and Wales as the only parts of the Atlantic Archipelago which were not in the European Union, which then places on them a big lot of pressure to do something to retain their trading association with Europe. Now, what they could do at that point is for the European Union negotiators to say to the English negotiators, look, we've been at an impasse for a while and you've crashed out of the EU, but how about this? We offer you the best free trade deal that has ever been done by the European Union. So you will get terrific access to the European markets. Uh, you'll be able to trade in and out freely. You will get this deal for a reduced price and we will reduce the amount that you are having to pay out of the divorce bill. Now the divorce bill is 39 billion pounds. So let's say they deducted 8%, which would be Scotland's geographic share of that. And Scotland would pay that because that's our bit of it, that's fair enough. And we want to be in these programmes anyway. So England's divorce bill is then reduced slightly. England then is in the, 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 the better position of being able to come back with a Brexit, which would allow them, through a free trade agreement, to reopen car factories which had been shut or mothballed or slowed down because of Brexit, 
to re-establish the supply chains which had broken because of the uncertainty of Brexit, to avoid having to become a, a vassal state of the United States and being able to maintain some international standing. At the same time, Scotland becomes an independent state alongside all of Ireland. So these two Celtic nations effectively become the two nearest trading neighbours of England, because we would be. And in these situations, perhaps the car manufacturing companies might want to make components in England and then take them to Scotland and have them assembled into vehicles there, which can then be sold directly into the European Union. There are all, all sorts of benefits to this. But only if, um, if we time this correctly, if we vote yes just before Brexit occurs, then I believe the European Union, because we would still be Europeans at the point where Brexit happens, we voted to stay as part of the European Union, we voted to get out of the UK Union at that moment. The Europeans, I think, would, would see that as indicative of us remaining in Europe. They, they wouldn't ask us to give up our European membership at that point. They've already said that they're not interested in doing that. So it would just be a case of we would remain in the European Union while these negotiations continue. And that means uh, that England would be effectively negotiating with Scotland as well, because we would be part of the European Union. And the food, the drink, the whisky, the water, the renewable energy, the oil, the gas, whatever else Scotland has to offer, um, can be part of trading arrangements across the border with England. And if England has got a free trade agreement with the European Union, then the border between Scotland and England becomes a transfer point for goods going into and out of the European Union from what's left of the United Kingdom. It's a complicated business, but if you're trying to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear, this makes a bit more sense, because if we wait until after Brexit to vote for independence, um, people will probably be too scared and too panicky by then. Think too many things will be going wrong. They will start to feel scared again. They don't want to vote for more changes when so many things are already changing. Mm -hmm. It would make more sense for us to do this before Brexit happens, possibly in just the, the weeks before Brexit happens. So we then have time with our European counterparts uh, to put proposals to the English government which might benefit them uh, and which would bring a speedy separation of Scotland and England in, in terms of the Union, but while still keeping both the trading arrangements open and free, a border that's open and free between Scotland and England, so that families and businesses and people can cross back and forwards unhindered as they do at the moment. If England <coughs> pardon me, were to leave the, the European Union, taking Scotland with it, um, Scotland's economy would virtually collapse because our, our, our overseas trade with uh, the European Union is gigantic and it would ruin many of our businesses and throw hundreds of thousands of people out of work. Whereas this would do the opposite. This would keep all of our jobs and keep all of our trade with, uh, with Europe and North America, but at the same time would help our English colleagues, our English friends, our English family members uh, to have a softer landing when Brexit does happen. But I think it can only really work if we do it just before Brexit occurs. If we wait any longer than that, we run the risk of too many other things going wrong before 2021. And many people have said in the, the papers today that the, um, the signified end date for, um, for the new independence referendum of uh, 2021 is far too late because Brexit will have been over by, by then, by over a year, things will have got significantly worse by that time and we don't know what will have happened to Scotland's industries, our jobs, our health service. We don't even know if our, um, our, our parliament will remain open. We don't even know if the British state would allow that. We don't even know if they would have restarted a dodgy nuclear power station which then blows up and contaminates massive areas of Scotland. We don't know a lot of things, there's so many things could go wrong. So surely, as I've said many times in this programme before, it's best to get your retaliation in first. We want to preempt all of these things before they happen, so they don't happen. I, I work, or worked in the past uh, in health and safety as uh, an accident investigator and also as a health and safety advisor for, for a few years. And one of the things I do know is that 
where a risk of something happening exists, the best way uh, to prevent that happening, whatever that incident is that's potentially going to happen, the best way to do it is to remove it completely um, by taking action that prevents the circumstances from coming about. And I believe that having an independence referendum shortly before Brexit will stop all of these potential uh, disasters occurring and allow both um, Scotland, Northern Ireland and England the chance to renew the relationship with each other in a peaceful way without the strife that everybody is so scared of and without the job losses that everybody is so worried about. The European Union wants a workable solution. The European Union is expert at compromises and finding solutions to very complicated international diplomatic problems and it is brilliant at it. If we remain in Europe as an independent state, even if England doesn't recognise it at first, but if the European Union does, at that very moment we would save ourselves, we would perhaps save the people in Northern Ireland if we made it also made it a condition that England must allow a border poll to take place before they get this, this nice tasty new trade deal. There are a lot of things that could be negotiated this way. The whole situation could be turned around uh, and the poor English people who face the worst of this, English and Welsh people I should say, who face the worst excesses of this accidental Tory Brexit, this catastrophe, could be saved from a lot of the grief if we just act first. Not just for our own good, because it would be for our own good, but for the health and the welfare and the, the good neighbourliness of our friends in Ireland, both North and South, and also in England, who we want to keep trading with and we want to stay friendly with. We want to still play football with them. We want to go on holiday in England. We want them to come here. You know, just because a political union breaks up doesn't mean the country has to, uh, has to be enemies with its neighbours. And, and I can see that the European Union is, the whole idea of the European Union is to prevent such border warfare and to prevent countries from falling out with each other. That's the whole point of the European Union. So have a think about what I've said. The idea of having the NDRF just before the Brexit is due to happen, whether it's accidental or deliberate, doesn't matter. And we, um, we speak to our European colleagues in the European Union after we've secured our yes vote and say look the people of Scotland have spoken the, uh, the English government's not listening to this we want you to help us negotiate with them and we have stuff to trade with England and you know that Scotland is a good European country we'll take on our share of the debt because we we want to continue the projects that were started in Europe we are part of them the scientific research for example um, some of the social funds that have been started, we want to continue with that. We can do a lot. And the European Union, I am certain, once Scotland votes in this way, at the point where Brexit happens afterwards, the European Union is in a position to negotiate, not only on Europe's behalf, but also on the behalf of Scotland as well. And that's something that we've lacked up until now, is some muscle to force the English government to recognise a Scottish independence vote. And by putting a new deal to them, the European Union could allow that to happen. They could help England to recognise Scotland's sovereignty and its decision to end the Union. And at the same time, it could offer England the chance to renegotiate the entire Brexit package, completely redesign it in light of the new circumstances, to create something which works better for all of the countries on, on these islands and which works perfectly uh, in tune with Europe as well. That way everybody gets something of what they want. It's not perfect. Uh, the Brexit that happens won't be absolutely perfect. There will be a hell of a lot softer than what's being proposed at the moment. And the accidental Brexit that looks like it's going to happen could be prevented. The cliff edge could be prevented if we do this. So these are just my first thoughts. I haven't had a chance to game through the entire thing and figure out what would happen if... A, B or C happened. But I'd like to just throw this out there and if anybody in the European Union happens to watch this blog, please get back to me and let me know what you think uh, and what you think the European Union's negotiators, people like Guy Verhofstadt, uh, Michel Barnier and, and Mr Juncker, who I believe is retiring soon, and Donald Tusk, all of these, uh, these big hitters in Europe would think of an idea like this. 
of by recognising Scotland's sovereignty and its its new independent statehood, we could we could help uh, England to get a better deal. All England has to do is recognise Scotland's independence, and you know we can take the brakes off Brexit and make a much better deal with the European Union. And everybody wins. Borders remain open. England is out of the EU but still able to trade. Scotland is sitting comfortably in the EU for as long as we wish to be there, or we might wish to renegotiate our terms as well. But it leaves all the options open, and it prevents the kind of strife that I worry about, and I think everybody worries about post-Brexit. Anyway, I'll leave you with that tonight. I'm off. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.